Hi there. Um, we're back again, and today I thought I would do a little video on printing with thickened dyes. Um, I recently had an article come out in Quilting Arts. It's um, the December 2010, the January 2011 issue, and I talked about a lot of different ways in which you can use Thermofax screens to screen print, and I briefly touched on um, using a thickener called Super Clear to print with thickened dyes. So I thought that I'd do a little video demonstrating how to mix up your thickened dye and how to print with it. Um, there's a lot of little safety precautions. Well, they're not little. I mean, they're important, but there's several safety precautions that we need to talk about before we get to it. Um, the dye that I'm using is Procyon from ProChem, and I'm going with the basic red, because I like red, and um, it's a powder, so when you work with any kind of powdered dye, you want to make sure that you have some kind of face mask, um, because th trust me, when I first started dyeing, I inhaled some of this stuff, and it was not pleasant. So I like the basic um, dust mask that you can get from the store. If you're more sensitive, they have uh, more heavy duty ones that could filter out absolutely everything, but I find that these work really well. So you need one of these, no doubt about it, have to have one. Um, I also recommend disposable latex gloves because while it is possible to get um, the dye off your hands, you don't really want to constantly get it on it. I've heard stories about uh, people developing allergies from it. So it's better to be safe than sorry and use disposable gloves. You can get these at the drugstore, the grocery store, everywhere. If you do happen to get dye on your hands, this product, Redoran, is absolutely fantastic. It will take the dye right out of your skin. So this is a good thing to have, too. Um, there's two places that I buy my dye supplies from. Uh, ProChem is where I, Pro Chemical and Dye in Massachusetts is where I like to buy my actual dye from. Um, I buy a lot of other supplies from Dharma out in California. So today we're going to talk about a product called Super Clear. If you've ever printed with thickened dyes before, um, you may have used something called sodium alginate, which is a light brown powder. It's actually a type of seaweed, and you have to put it in a blender and let it set overnight, and it works just fine. It's an economical alternative. It a lot of people use it and have really good results with it. Um, I'm not really lazy, but I kind of like convenience, so when I discovered Super Clear, um, I fell in love, and that's what I use now. Super Clear is basically just a clear dye thickener, and you just add dye powder to it, and you're ready to go. It does cost more. Although uh, Dharma does have their own brand now, which um, I've heard is less expensive than the other brand on the market. Uh, I've not looked at what the other brand is, so I can't even really tell you. But I'm going to provide links to Dharma and Pro Chemical and Dye at the end of the video so that you can go ahead and um, check out them for supplies. And I'm also going to provide a link to a tutorial on how to use the sodium alginate if you would prefer to go that route. It's not something I've used a lot, so I can't really give you instructions on how to do it, but there's plenty of resources on the web. So let's get started. Um, the first thing we need to do is measure out our dye thickener, which I use two-thirds of a cup, and it goes a pretty long way. Um, one thing I do do is I have this, I use these kitty litter boxes for pretty much everything. I use them for low water immersion dyeing and for washing my screens out for thermal flex printing and they just come in handy for everything. So at the bottom of it I have some damp paper towels. When you measure out dye you think you're being neat but the fact of the matter is is that the dye particles go everywhere so if you put some damp paper towels at the bottom of a container, it'll help catch that and you'll have less of a chance of making a mess. So you need a cup and you also need 
um, a measuring cup. This is two-thirds of a cup. These are dye-dedicated measuring tools, means they never see my kitchen, they never see food. You cannot mix the two. So go to the dollar store, buy some cheap measuring cups, and reserve them for your dyeing activities. All I do is I just pour it right in, and you kind of have to be a little careful, but it's pretty easy. Set that aside, and then in a cup, just pour it in. This stuff doesn't have any odor, um, so I don't have my mask on right now, but I still recommend wearing gloves because you really don't want to get this stuff all over your skin. So now we're going to work with a dye. Got my mask. I'm putting it on. Now I'm going to sound a little like Darth Vader. So this is half a teaspoon is what I like in terms of a dye mixture. I add the dye directly to the super clear because I don't want to make it any thinner than it already is. I experimented and I found that the thickness it's already at straight out of the bottle works the best. So we're going to take that off and I just kind of spoon it off and dump it in and put your lid back on as soon as you're done so that, you know, accidents happen. I've knocked over a jar of this before and it's no fun cleaning it up. Take a plastic spoon and give it a good mix. And you know, we're already ready to start printing. That's all there is to it. That's why I like this because it's really, really easy and I don't need to store a blender or anything like that. So if you're a little looking for a little more convenience like I like, then this is a good product to use. And this stuff will go a long way. So now that we're done working with powder dyes, I'm going to go ahead and take my Darth Vader mask off and we're going to get to printing. Before you print on your fabric, you need to soak it in soda ash. And we are already running out of time. So um, we're going to take a quick little break and then I will come back and show you how to print. Be right back.